Welcome to a new video from Movies Tier List. In this video, we will explain the main differences between the 1984 version of Dune and the most current version from 2021. Obviously, we will have to spoiler certain details, and it would be preferable if you have already seen this incredible film, which you can find, for example, on the Prime Video platform. To begin, it must be said that the main difference is that the 1984 version adapts the entire first book of the saga, written by Frank Herbert. This at the time was decisive in earning a bad review and being forgotten for years. Since in just two hours and 15 minutes of film, they developed the entire book. But with so much information, so little explained, it is not fully understood. We cannot attribute the blame for this to its director, David Lynch, if not to the producers of the film. The original version had a duration of almost five hours, and for commercial and executive reasons, it was reduced and is the main reason for its failure. In the original version, the story begins with a short narration from the daughter of the Emperor of the Universe that introduces us to where the film takes place, the planet Arrakis, AKA Dune, the planet Caladan, home of the Aredes family, the planet Gieti Prime, where the Harkonnen live, and the planet Kaitan, home of the Emperor. In the most current version, the one who introduces us to the story is Zendaya herself, giving more prominence and importance than we think. They ravage our lands in front of our eyes. They're cool. These outsiders, the Harkonnens, came long before I was born. She is an inhabitant of the planet Arrakis and belongs to the Furman tribe, the only race that could adapt to the extreme conditions of the desert. At the beginning of the 1984 film, we have a scene that does not appear in the current one, where we are introduced to someone with even more authority than the emperor of the universe himself, since he is apparently the intellectual author of everything we will see in the film. He is an important member of the Guild, an association of interstellar beings who decide interplanetary destiny. And he's this strange living being inside some kind of futuristic fish tank. When we are introduced to Paul Arides, the protagonist, we see that in the older version, he is played by Kyle MacLachlan. A good performance, but with less stage presence than the actor in the 2021 version, Timothy Chalamet who with a superb performance manages to command respect and fear without needing a great physique. And here we have a very notable difference, especially due to the time, the shield training scene. In the first version, it is a regrettable effect that remains very strange and has aged very poorly. In the modern version, a much better, more subtle scene was achieved with that futuristic touch that the film tries to capture. The Atreides family lives peacefully on their planet, while Paul trains in combat with his teacher. In the 1984 version, he is played by the great Patrick Stewart, Professor X himself, and in the modern version by Josh Brolin, Thanos himself. But we also see that his mother trains him with a strange psychic power called the voice, because as we have not mentioned, the events of this story take place in the year 10,000, in a future where other planets and advanced technology can be inhabited. To make interstellar travel work, they need a matter called melange, better known as spice, which can only be missed from Arrakis, better known as Dune, due to its desert environments and the absence of water. This matter is produced naturally by giant worms, an animal species as dangerous as it is necessary. But this resource also has other uses that are much more powerful than it initially seems. Its exploitation was in charge of the Harkonnen family, a warrior and unscrupulous race that only sought personal benefit and economic wealth from the sale of this resource. But an imperial decision puts the Atreides family in check, who are forced to intervene on the planet and take charge of the extraction of the spice, displacing the Harkonnens. But we see that there is something more behind this curious decision. The Emperor needs to eliminate the Atreides family. And why? 
because there is a race called Bene Gesserit, with strange powers that grant them visions. And these women, since only the female sex has the ability to withstand this power, they were able to see a future where a chosen one masters this ability, but is much more powerful than them. Since they cannot control it, they decide to eliminate it. Returning to the development of the story, the Atreides family arrives in Areca, and we see how a group of people call it Lisan al Gaib, and the mother explains what it means. Lisan al Gaib, a voice from the outer world. It's standing for Messiah. That means the Benedictus has been at work here. As they settle into her new home, we have a scene where we are introduced to the mysterious Reverend Mother, who is the leader of a powerful and mysterious brotherhood to which her mother, Jessica, belongs. Here, Paul must pass a strange test where he places his hand in a box, and thanks to this, they manage to confirm that he is the chosen one, that the powers in him are very strong. The scene is almost exact in both versions, although the modern version is more explanatory with visions of a future that we can later confirm as the films progress. How dare you use the voice on Put your right hand in the box. Your mother bade you obey me. I hold it your neck. Put your right hand in the box. What's in the box? Obey me. Stop. During the day, they decide to go explore the planet and above all, See how they extract the spice, since it is obtained using an excavator machine, but under the constant danger of the true inhabitants of the planet, the giant worms. Here we have two almost identical scenes in both versions. Although the original version is simpler, without much danger, they rescue some workers, and we get to see a little of this race. However, in the modern version, the scene is much longer. Paul has even more visions and is in more danger. The danger of the giant worms can be seen in a more imposing way. And in one of the mystical visions, we hear a name that will be of great relevance, Kwisatz Haderach, a genetically sought after race with powers of clairvoyance and ancestral knowledge in space and time of both genders. It is the most powerful being and can be said to be a definitive Bene Gesserit male version, something never seen since, as we said, only women could possess this power and they had controlled thousands of generations with genetic breeding and mental manipulation. Waiting for the night, the premeditated attack arrives. And we have another difference. In the old version, the Harkonnen attack on the Atreides family is poorly developed, and it only takes a few minutes to present the battle. In the current version, we see how this betrayal is plotted, who is involved, and the battle is much more epic, and with more minutes much better developed for the public. After this attack, both Jessica and Paul manage to survive, but her father cannot escape and falls in combat. With the help of Dr. Liet Keynes and a good family friend, Duncan. In the original version, he is a flatter character and not as affectionate. In the modern version, he is played by Jason Momoa and is much more emotionally attached and has a more friendly relationship with Paul. And this is why, when he sacrifices his life to save them so they can escape, he feels his loss even more. While sheltered in a Furman facility, they are ambushed by the Harkonnens to finish the job, but they manage to escape in the middle of a storm. The vehicle falls in the middle of the desert and Raban, second in command of the Harkonnens, assumes that they could not survive in those conditions and considers them dead. Baron Vladimir, this strange and unpleasant character, leader of the Harkonnen family, 
executes the new orders, which are to continue with the extraction of the spice and eliminate all the fermin from the planet. And here we have another difference with the older version. We see that the character was more unpleasant, not so large in size, with the effects and makeup of the time they achieved a character that was more grotesque than imposing. And we also have another big difference. When we are presented with the villains of this saga, in the oldest version, we already know that they are two brothers. The one who stars in most of the film is Raben, who here does not look as evil and dangerous as the modern version, played by Dave Bautista, known for his role in Guardians of the Galaxy, Drax. His great physical prowess and a more impulsive and aggressive attitude produce more respect in the spectators. But in the old version, we are also introduced to a second villain who will take more prominence for us in Dooney Part 2, that he will have the video of him on the channel next week. The character is played by Sting, a well-known singer of the time. He fulfills the famous rule as an actor. He is a great singer with a regrettable performance. He is not at all imposing to what we will have in the second film, played by Austin Butler, a much more imposing and dangerous role. After surviving in the desert for a few days, thanks to special suits that can contain and reuse the same body perspiration. They are found by a group of Fremen who precisely created those costumes, and he finally meets Chani, the mysterious woman with whom he had visions. At first they refuse to help them, but after both their mother and Paul skillfully defend themselves, they agree to a duel to the death to find out if they will be accepted into their tribe. And even though there is some doubt, our protagonist wins, and they agree to integrate them and take them home with them. Here we have the final scene with this famous shot, and it leaves us with a very open ending for what was the delivery of 2024. This is only the beginning. The 1984 version continues the story much more, and in just 50 minutes, it concludes what in the new film 2024 takes almost three hours. But we will develop that in our next video, with the summary and differences of the first adaptation from 1984 and the recently released version. Which, by the way, has two enormous differences that they could have included in the new film and made it even more epic than it is. I hope you liked it. Leave your like and subscribe, which is totally free and helps a lot to continue creating this type of content until the next video.